And I like that I have a lot of room here. I rewrote y, so it would be easier for me to figure out how to find the derivative. And also easier to see that we have something being squared. So this something right here being squared, when we take the derivative, we know that we have to use the power rule first. So it's 2 times that something. And then that something is then raised to the first power. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of that something. And the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared of whatever it is you're taking the cotangent of. So that's 5x minus 1 there. But then we have to multiply also by the derivative of 5x minus 1, which is 5. Okay, so when we put everything together, we see we have a 5, a 2, and a negative. So that's going to come out to be a negative 10. And then we write, uh, we have that negative 10 being multiplied by the cotangent of 5x minus 1. And that is being multiplied by the cosecant squared of 5x minus 1. So I'm going to recap this problem here for you. We can see that we have the co that something being squared. And that something being squared means that we're going to get a different color here. And we have something being squared. So 2 times the something to the first power times the derivative of the something. Okay, The derivative of the cotangent is uh, negative cosecant squared of that other thing. And then we have to also multiply by the derivative of that other thing. So there's basically just two functions that are embedded within other functions. And so you have to use the chain rule, uh, chain rule two times. Okay? Chain rule twice. Don't forget how to do that. Number 87, here we see we have two functions that are being multiplied together. And let me do that in a different color. Okay? So we have function 1 and function 2. Y prime is equal to the first function, negative 3x, multiplied by the derivative of the second. And we know that the derivative of ln is 1 over whatever we're taking the ln of, but then multiplied by the derivative of whatever we're taking the ln of, which is negative 1. And then plus the ln, the second function, which is ln of 2 minus x, multiplied by the derivative of the first function, which is negative 3. Okay. Uh, let's see, can we clean this up a little bit? Negative 1 times negative 3x is 3x over 2 minus x. And we have that minus 3, so we have minus, uh, minus 3 times ln of 2 minus x. And that is it. Okay. Number 88, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this in a different color. I'm going to rewrite this as, uh, let's see here, 3 times something to the 1 half power, and that something is ln of x squared to the 1 half power. So therefore, I know that I have the, that the derivative of y then is equal to, I use the power rule because I have something being raised to a power, and that power I'm going to be multiplying by the 3 out in front. 3 times 1 half is 3 halves, multiplied by what's inside, which is ln of x squared, to the 1 half minus 1. And 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Okay. But then I have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside, this stuff here, the derivative of the ln of x squared. Okay, I'll, I'll save that one because it's a lot to try to do in my head. And so I get 3 halves multiplied by, again, ln of x squared to the negative 1 half. And then I have to multiply that by the derivative of the ln of x squared, so I can focus on that right now. The derivative of the ln of anything is 1 over the anything. Okay? And then we have to multiply that by the derivative of the anything. And the, the anything in this case is your x squared. So the derivative of ln of x squared is 1 over x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So now I've calculated my derivative, and let's see if I can simplify things a little bit. I know that that x over there cancels with that one. I can see that 2 over here cancels with that 2 right there. And all I have left in the numerator then is my 3. And then in my denominator I have this x multiplied by the square root of ln of x squared. 
That's the cleanest way to write it. Did I miss anything there? I don't think so. Okay, so that's it for that one. Number 89, last one on this page. The derivative of the tangent, we know that to be the secant squared. Okay, whatever the, you're taking the tangent of, the derivative of the tangent is secant squared of whatever that is. And so in this case, it's cosine of x to the fourth. Well, now we have to multiply by the derivative of the cosine of x to the fourth. And the derivative of the cosine is negative sine. Of what? Of x to the fourth. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of x to the fourth. And the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. So all that in one step. Let's bring the negative out front and the 4x cubed out front as well. And we've got the secant. Let me make this a little cleaner here. We have the secant squared of the cosine of x to the fourth. And we're going to multiply all of that stuff by the sine of x to the fourth. So that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is basic finding derivatives using the chain rule. If you can learn how to do those before your final exam, you'll be in good shape in this section.